Oh, well, uh, hello there, and welcome to another exciting episode of Knife Chats. Uh, kind of caught me off guard there. I'm really not sure where I'm going to go with this uh, video. Um, the cool thing is, is I finally got the third in the, the family of Wichert sailing knives. I had this one for quite a while. I, I had this one probably for about five or six years. And after getting this one, it's like, do I even really want to get the other ones? The cool thing about this knife is it glows in the dark. So that's pretty cool. Um, this is the second one I picked up. Uh, this one is stamped West Marine. Notice uh, it looks a little bit different not exactly the same earlier versions of this have the same handle as this one has this is a later version of it um, i wonder if i'm going to end up having to buy the earlier version of this now just so i have a matching set that's the uh, the mindset of a collector not a user i gotta tell you gotta tell you straight out and then the other thing is is as a collector uh, would I prefer this not to have West Marine on there? In any case, this version is the two-bladed version. Uh, so it has the shackle key. And I just finally grabbed the three-bladed version. This is the one I really wanted to get. And as you can see, it's not in perfect shape. Somebody actually put their name on the back with a marker. I could probably get that off if I work at it a little harder. This is the three-blade version, though. It's got the uh, main sheep foot blade, the... Uh, the shackle key and then the uh, the big old marlin spike on there. Uh, as you notice, they all have these uh, heavy plastic handles, but they are all also slip joints. Now, like I said, this is the very first one I bought, and um, this I added to it just so I could hang it for display purposes. The cool thing about the knife is you have this uh, hole through the blade, uh, and you notice these have a little hole there. Too, and that allows you to actually pinch the blade quite firmly and pull it open. And then you've got a sheep foot style blade on this knife. Um, and you notice it is half serrated and half uh, fine edge. You see the Witcher brand firmly stamped in there. And then you see that it is made in France. Now this one is not marked, but the blade steel uh, is usually just marked as Inox, which is basically French for stainless steel. Um, and that's where one of the problems comes in with this knife. Um, notice it, I would not say it has any kind of real snap. There is a strong um, back spring in there and it does hold the blade in place quite well. It does lock it in, in place quite well. It also holds it closed quite well. You do have to actually pull it open, but it almost feels like a friction folder uh, when you're opening it and you do have to pull it all the way around all the time. The handle is not necessarily uh, grippy or anything, but the real problem with these knives um, is the stainless steel that is used in these. Um, you may not know it, but these use a surgical stainless steel. And they actually used to say what the surgical stainless steel was in these. They don't anymore, but what it was is 316 stainless steel. And 316 stainless steel is actually used in the making of scalpels, but uh, we're talking about disposable scalpels that are razor thin, you know? And so once they dull, they dull, and uh, they throw them away. They're, they're disposable. This is not a disposable blade. This is um, just a regular blade here. It is a little slicey. You've got a nice uh, grind going all the way down. It's a flat grind all the way to the edge there. And there was an edge on this at one time, and you can sort of put an edge on it, but edge retention is going to be awful. And that's one of the reasons why you've got that scallop portion there, uh, because at least that part will hold an edge a little longer because the hardness on uh, 316 is in the 30s, like 38, 39 is about as hard as you're going to be able to get it on the uh, HRC scale. It is a very soft steel. It is the steel used in, um, in flatware in the kitchen. So your knives, forks, and spoons that you're using at the kitchen table are often made in this kind of steel, a 316 stainless steel. Um, the good thing about it is it's pretty much impervious to rust, even in salt water. 
But the problem with it is edge retention is just absolutely awful. And so you'd be sharpening it all the time. But in any case, this is the first one I got. Then I got the second one here. This is the, uh, uh, the one with the uh, shackle key. And the shackle key is not bad. A 316 stainless steel shackle key is not going to be a problem at all. It does have the bottle opener with it. And um, otherwise it's pretty much like that one. This one has a little bit better action going. There is a little bit of snap on it. The little hole here works very well to get your thumb and finger on and you can open it up. This one has just a straight edge. And uh, like I said, it is basically a butter knife. You can get an edge on it. You can sharpen it up as best you can and it will cut through some rope and everything. But if there is a serrated edge on this, it would work a little bit better. And you see there, it just says Inox France. Uh, and that brings us to the last one. This last one, I got this one just a few days ago. And uh, I had no idea uh, about how this knife functioned or anything. And I opened the blade up and the first thing I saw is I, it's good. It's like good, it's, it's serrated the whole length so it will actually cut through line and stuff like that. That'll be good. And I opened up the blade and it's like, well, crap. And then I looked inside and it's like, oh man, the liner is all messed up and the liner's in the way of the blade. And it's like, okay, well, let me open up the spike. And then it's like, okay, well, it's moving a little bit. Okay, and then I got the spike all the way open and I looked and it's like, oh crap. And I looked down in there, you don't see it now because I pulled it all out, but the liner was all bent all over the place and I could not for the life of me open and close the blades correctly. And so I ended up having to pull out the liners um, and then file them down to get them out of the way of the, uh, of the blades and everything so that I could get the blades to close. And after I did all that, I'm like, oh crap, they're still not closing. So I ended up pounding on the uh, side of the table to get these things to uh, unlock. And then after doing all that, I look over here and it says to unlock. And you basically lift that up and then the blades will close. <laughs> So it's one of those cases where it's like you got to be smarter than the knife and you got to read some instructions because I was ready to send a nasty note to the person who uh, gave me the knife because uh, it was damaged. I mean, the, the, the liners were all bent and everything, but the liners were not uh, uh, stopping the, the blades from opening and closing. It's actually the way the knife is designed. So when you open the blade, it will lock, which is a pretty cool feature. The only problem with it is the uh, the steel in these is relatively soft. So keeping them sharp is another story. It will cut rope, but it will not cut the rope uh, nearly as well as many other knives with a little bit better of a steel, like a 420 even, uh, because these are just very hard to uh, keep sharp. And then we have that, and now I can close that. The spike is really nice on this though. It wobbles a little bit. That might be my own fault from uh, taking out the liner. But like I said, the liner was all mushed up and everything in, a, in the way. And uh, it, was, it wasn't stopping the blade from uh, closing, but what it was doing was um, stopping the blade from resting all the way down onto the uh, bottom of the spring which is what it needed to do. But this has got a relatively good spike on it. I will give it credit for a good spike. As for the uh, the blade steel, that's the only real issue with this knife. I don't know if uh, Witchard ever came out with a better uh, blade steel in these knives either. But it's a nice straight spike, uh, nicely rounded at the tip. You're not going to uh, do any damage to a line by cutting it with the uh, spike or anything. And you can close the spike by lifting either of the blades, it'll it'll break it loose. And that's because of uh, the way the back spring is right there. See how the back spring is there? You can see some of the, the liner that I had to file down. But when you're uh, opening the blade, see how the back spring goes down? 
and then it'll lock in place. As soon as you lock it in place, the back spring flips back into place. It, it flips up and that prevents that blade from closing. But when you lift up on the shackle key, you, you depress the back spring again and now you can close the blade. Uh, the difference is when you open the uh, shackle key, it will initially depress the, uh, the back spring, but when you open it all the way up, even though it looks like it would lock, because of the shape of the, uh, the uh, pivot point, uh, it does not lock. So the shackle key will not lock, but everything else will lock. Uh, in fairness, I, I would have actually preferred to have the shackle key lock and the, um, and the uh, Marlin spike lock instead of the blade. But um, I think the reason they did it the way they did it is you would not want to use the, um, the main blade as the main device for unlocking these other two. It, would, it just wouldn't be safe. But anyway... It's a pretty cool knife. I do like it. I just wish it had a better blade steel. And that is really the only weakness to this. But, um, I mean, to be honest, to be fair, the main reason I needed to have it is simply because I needed it for my collection of Marlin Spike knives. And uh, I'm very happy to finally have that in the collection. <laughs> I just, and also learning actually how the knife functions. Yeah, literally, it's one of those problems you have sometimes when you're buying um, used knives from someplace. Sometimes um, even the person selling you doesn't really know how the knife functions. Uh, I had the same thing happen with the very first switchblade I ever bought. But in any case, uh, now I've got all three of the Witcher's glow-in-the-dark uh, sailing knives, and I'm pretty happy to have them. Okay, looking back at the um, <laughs> video, I, I mentioned it's a very soft steel and it doesn't stay sharp, and that is true. Uh, but if you actually sharpen it, and like the serrated portion here, if you notice it's scalloped and it only shows up on one edge, and, and as you can also tell here, it has been sharpened um, on many occasions in the past. Uh, and that was before me. Uh, but basically, with the serrated portion, you're just pulling back on one side. With the front part, you would be sharpening both edges and, and you know, getting, and because it is more or less a straight edge, you can almost just drag it, you know, a couple times. And by doing so, you will get this thing. It, remember, it's like a scalpel steel. You can get this thing razor sharp. You probably don't want to get it that sharp because if you do, it will probably dull much faster. It's going to have a toothy bite to it if you're cutting into paper and stuff, which isn't a real problem if you're talking about cutting a, a nylon line and stuff like that. So that will work all right. This one's even easier to sharpen because it is just a fine line or fine edge all the way. Now, this was so dull before that I could barely even cut a paracord with it, but just simply by uh, running it through this, you know, a couple times. This is just a whetstone and getting the edge going. And I, it's a, you can see right there. It gets a lot sharper. I can feel it on my finger now that it's a much sharper edge. And the same thing with this edge. Um, again, full scalloped edge. Um, but all I would do is have to drag it like so on one side. Get that one side sharpened. And then it will start cutting a whole lot better than it was before. I should have taken video from before, but before this was just sliding off. The knife was just sliding off the line. Uh, it would not even cut the paracord. Now I can actually cut the paracord, you know, it is a little hard, but it does cut before it wasn't even cutting because of how dull it was. So it will sharpen. How long will it keep an edge? You can see the, uh, the, uh, the serrated edge 
bit into the line and because it bit into the line it cut it a lot easier but yeah it cuts now before they were not even cutting so it will sharpen and it'll sharpen quite easily uh simply because it is such a sharp uh such a soft steel 39 hrc that is very soft um i would probably consider using like thousand grit sandpaper to sharpen the blade that might even work better than a whetstone um and again it would leave it a little bit toothy which is not necessarily the worst thing in the world when you're talking about what this is really designed to cut it's designed to cut a uh, line like nylon uh, line and stuff like that and usually you know quarter inch half inch line maybe tops so for what they're designed for i have to go back and say it's probably not a bad steel for what it's designed for especially in salt water this thing is not going to rust on you at all so I think that's why they were popular and remained quite popular for quite some time. Um, I have a, I guess, um, when I th started thinking about it a little more, uh, the more um, these knives intrigued me. And I, I actually have to give Witchard more props for them than I, at first I was doing. Uh, yeah, it's a very soft steel, but at the same time, um, U.S. Navy knives, uh, the, the diving knives for deep sea diving and stuff, they use the same steel, a, a, a 308 or a 316 stainless steel because they were going in salt water all the time and didn't matter that they got dull fast. What mattered is that you could get them sharp. So when you were going into the water, um, you could use it, uh, especially in an emergency case. And uh, so in that, feature i guess um the steel isn't the worst possible steel you could run into the thing is also today with h1 and h2 and other uh um nitrogen based and cobalt based uh stainless steels out there there's a lot better options on the market today in any case these are uh, my three witcher knives hope you enjoyed this and um uh, I hope you also enjoyed the little bit of backtracking here on my uh, ridiculing of the steel before I actually looked into it a little closer. Let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with Tobias. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. really do appreciate your time here.